It's May 11th, 2019. This video I'm going to call The Tale of Two Women. I'm in Canada. And this story goes all the way back to last August of 2018. And maybe probably a few months before that. I wasn't on Twitter at the time. And now some people are blocking me. And Michelle Rempel has blocked me as of yesterday. And that's fine. I don't think politicians should be forced to um, not block people. So they should have the freedom to block people or not. Um, because the more we take away anyone's freedom or any type of freedoms and any type of choice, it never ends up very well for anyone in the long run, because then we just see a slippery slope of losing more free speech and more of our freedoms. So I really wasn't on Twitter last year, but I was uh, listening um, to news and YouTube videos and trying to keep up with um, different ev world events and, and things that way, um, but not really offering any of my own um, comments or replies to anything on Twitter. Um, so I noticed that the Conservative Party had blocked Rebel Media. Plus, I was noticing other things uh, that the Conservative Party was and wasn't doing. And I was gauging that and comparing that to the Republicans, which are right-wing conservative party in the U.S., I could see that they were really um, outspoken and fighting hard for the things that they wanted to see done. And even before that, when they weren't in majority um, and had any type of power, you know, looking at that and, and even when Obama was president, they were constantly outspoken and um, really, really fighting for the things that they wanted. And hearing other conservative radio hosts and TV hosts and specific politicians, um, such as Trey Gowdy and Jason Chaffetz, they are really outspoken, whether they're in power or not, um, and a majority or not. So I was really surprised at just the wishy-washiness, the very blandness of replies and not even working against this uh, the stuff that Trudeau was doing. The Conservative Party wasn't doing much or saying much or taking a stand and doing everything that they could and everything in their power. Whenever I would email them or ask them, um, I would send them emails. And the replies I would get, I would not direct replies uh, to my emails, but, you know, I would see replies that Michelle Rempel was posting videos on YouTube and Andrew Shear was doing videos. They were indirect replies, but they're, they, their answer to everything was, well, wait, we'll wait till, till the election. We'll wait till the election. Um, no, you don't sit around and wait to a, for an election. You fight, you speak up. Make Trudeau and the Liberals life a uh, living heck. Fight against it. Don't make it easy for them. So there was that thing. And then secondly, they ban rebel media. There's nothing wrong with rebel media. They're conservative, they're right wing. And even if they weren't, what gives you a right to ban people to come and record and ask questions? You know, uh, that's stopping them from being free to be a part of Canada and be a part of politics and what goes on and be a, a, be a part of the media. 
that you're taking away their choice of that, their freedom to do that, which is completely different than blocking someone on Twitter because you're not blocking them entirely from um, being on Twitter. You know, when when people get suspended and they can't be on Twitter at all, that's wrong. But individuals should be allowed to block whoever they want and politicians can block whoever they want. So I was, you know, and the Conservative Party had just put out a video about free speech. And then a, a few days later, they banned Rebel Media. I'm thinking in my head, OK, what the heck? So that was the second thing. There were other little things that were bothering me. Another thing that really, really bothered me is they knew about the UN Global Compact on Migration. Nothing was said about it until Maxime Bernier brought it up after he had started his new party and put out a petition. I'm thinking, what the heck? So if Bernier hadn't put it out there, none of us would have known about it. We would have been signed on to this thing and none of us would have known. That's not even fair. And it's wrong. So I was not impressed by this. I sent them an uh, email and let them know. So this goes back to them. Now, back to this tale of two women. Michelle Rempel stuck up for Elon Omar after she uh, did a, was caught on video saying the whole event of 9-11 was just some people that did something. That's 100% wrong. There are so many people that have so many issues with Ilan Omar. She's a very anti-Semitic. She has become a security risk. She's aligned herself with Muslim Brotherhood uh, and other designated terrorist organizations. She equates uh, American soldiers with terrorists, with Hezbollah and Hamas. How in the world can Michelle Rempel stick up for somebody like that? She's not. R Michelle Rempel said she's half right. That Elon Omar is half right. She's Elon Omar is 100 percent wrong in everything that she's doing. There is nothing right about diminishing. Uh, is, uh, he, worst terror attack on American soil that we've ever seen, which killed 26 Canadians. I'm going to leave it there. But all I did was post what other people were saying about Elon Omar as a reply to Michelle's tweet. I did not yell at her. I did not say hateful things to her. I did not curse at her. I just said, this is what other people say, hoping that she would do a little research into who Elon Omar was and retract it and say, you know what? After researching the wide range of controversy that Elon Omar is causing because of her behavior, I retract my statement and say that Elon Omar is 100% wrong. But Michelle Rempel hasn't done that. She's defended Elon Omar and she blocked me. And she's blocking you and many other Canadians. That's not right. It's kind of odd. I mean, she's free to do that, of course, as we all are. But that's not even conservative value. Does she really belong in the Conservative Party?